Hey, I'm Kenneth Weidstam. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my Leica talks, all things Leica. So, I recently bought a couple of diopters for my Leicas. See, I wear glasses, and it's really frustrating for me to look through a Leica M3 and not be able to see the whole frame without risking scratching up my glasses trying to get closer. But with a diopter and a forehead that holds glasses up, I can see the whole frame perfectly. And it's clear because I have a diopter on it. There was a eBay sale where a camera store, I didn't like, it might have been Midwest camera. They had two available minus 2.0 diopters, which is my prescription. And I often see them for like over $100 and I can't afford that. But these were $89 each. And I thought, huh. And I thought, well, I'll hit the watch button. Because sometimes when you hit the watch button, the seller will offer you a lower price because they see you're interested. But that didn't happen. So I thought, huh, maybe I'll go look at their web page. I wonder if these same items are on their website. And they were. And they were only $79. And I thought, huh, that's better. And then I thought, well, I'll just send them a quick email and say, hey, I'm interested in both of those. And if they were $60, I would buy both. And the person at the other end of the email replied, I'm changing the price right now. Go get them. And so for $120, <clears throat> I ended up with two diopters for my Leicas. And I put one on another Leica and put one on this one. And this one, I know it's really made for, I have a 50 millimeter Summicron. I have a beautiful 35 millimeter Summilux. But I've been using this camera that came, this lens that came with a, a Barnack like it just because it's so little and it either fits in my coat pocket or fits in my jeans pocket and I am so much of a not carry a bag kind of guy most of the time. When I'm going out with a photo walk with some friends I'll probably bring a small little bag but if I'm just going out to my daily routine I'm usually slinging a Nikon D610 over my shoulder because I need to shoot that for a very striker. And then this is in my pocket for friends and family and things that matter. And th that's the difference between the M3 and having that kind of a lens on it. And I have used it with a Summicron that's not collapsible, but it comes out to here. That's not fitting in my uh, jacket pocket and I'm kind of starting to worry it's going to fall out. But this doesn't want to fall out. And this was actually a fun one. I didn't realize that I, I thought I had sold it, but this is a double stroke M3. So it's an early one. And I kind of like the double stroke. I think that that's kind of like, a, it's not in perfect shape. You can see some of the vulcanites coming off, but it works perfectly good. I actually like using cameras that, as long as a vulcanite isn't hit, breaking off constantly, I don't want it to look like hell, but I don't mind a little bit of that. And the fact that this is my throw in the pocket camera, I'll probably end up replacing the Vulcanite someday when it gets worse. But the idea is I love having small, small cameras with me. And when I'm carrying a bag, that bag doesn't always go in with me to a grocery store, say, or to a drugstore. But if I go with this, that's always in my pocket. And I may photograph in the side of a drugstore or a grocery store because I see something that I really want to shoot in film or I think that it'll have lasting value down the road, add some time to that photograph. So this is my go-to at the moment. If I had to say anything, it's that diopter really makes it possible to love it. The diopter gives me the full experience of shooting a Leica. Not as great as a right-eyed person because a right-eyed person could keep their left eye open, but I'm not right-eyed, I'm left-eyed. So unfortunately, my right eye is blocked up by the viewfinder. But in a vertical mode, I can watch things kind of come in from real life into my view, but not horizontally. But having that diopter, to me, is a life changer in how I use this camera. I also have a thing where I'm constantly tightening it on just to make sure it's not working itself loose. I'm going to lose it because it's just, you know, a, a, a screw on mount. And when people talk about the latest Nikon mirrorless and they get all you know, enamored by that, I'm like, you know what? This is all I really need. I shoot the Nikon Digital for Street and for my Roy Striker, but this is really all I need. And it's 
certainly I take out other Leicas. I take out a Nikon S4 sometimes when I just want to try something, you know, work with something different. But this is the go-to pocketable camera the last month anyway. And I talked about on a Saturday show, the photo game. And it's one of these projects where I have to shoot a photo a week. So this stays in my pocket because I might come across something that uh, fulfills that assignment too. That's another good reason to have a film camera in pocket, not in a bag, not in a case, not at home. It doesn't do you any good. So anyway, I love small collapsible lenses. And I'll tell you, a 3.5 on a 50, 50 millimeter lens with a 3.5, that is, you would say too slow. You would say, you know what, it's kind of slow to have a 3.5 only. And I've been photographing inside of houses at a eighth of a second and a fifteenth of a second if I ask people to hold still. I've been shooting at night. I shot a, a reflection off of a motel sign off, off of a windshield. You can hold this. 3.5 will get you a lot. Because of the simplicity of the way it works without the mirror slap, you can get away with a lot slower speeds than you might, especially if you're careful. And the difference between this and an F2 is just sizeability. And I don't want that size in my pocket. So for me, that 3.5 is not too slow. You would think that, oh, it definitely would limit you what you can shoot. And it's like, you can't. I've actually, I was in a really, really dark place with some friends at a, a little pub. And they were sitting with their back to the light. So they were completely dark as I was looking at them. So I put my hands on the table and I said, just hold real, real still and I will too. And I photographed them at a half a second at 3.5 and it was perfect because I controlled it. I told them to hold still and I held still too. And I used that table for a brace. So the fact that I'm using a 3.5 on a Leica that is really made for, you know, the Sumacrons, the Sumaluxes, the, lots of different choices. And this lens is from an old Barnack Leica from probably a 3F and, you know, twos, and they all use this lens. This was a lens that came out in the 30s. That is a great example of when you have a quality lens and you work with good technique, you don't need it to be an, a 1.4 to create photographs. And I'm not even using a meter, I'm just guessing. If I'm anywhere where I am not sure if it's gonna be enough exposure, I'll just give it a little bit more. And I know Sunny 16 outside really well, and I know inside you shoot wide open as slow as you dare. Those are the two rules I use. So anyway, that's my like M3 story for the week. Hope you're enjoying. Thanks for tuning in. If you can support hit the Patreon, if you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. What are you doing? I'll be back next time. We'll talk more Leica photography. As always, here's the good light.